is the head football coach at Utah, entering his 18th season as Utah head coach, recipient of three National Coach of the Year awards. He is a two-time Pac-12 Coach of the Year. Also led Utah to their first Pac-12 championship game win last season. Utah is currently number seven in the preseason AP poll, and they open up at Florida September 3rd. Obviously, that's a huge one. Kyle Whittingham is my guest. Kyle, it's always great to have you on the show. How are you? Doing good, Jim. Thank you. Appreciate you having me on. Good to have you back. So we are about a week and a half away from you opening up on the road at Florida. It's a massive challenge, the kind of thing, Kyle, that most programs would try to avoid. Why was going to the swamp something you wanted to do? And then how do you go about preparing for that trip? Well, first of all, it was a, an opportunity for a home and home against a, a team that uh, you know is a national brand, and uh, you know that's good for our program. We have uh, a fairly large uh, number of players on our football team from the state of Florida, so that's another re- reason they're in our recruiting footprint down there. And so, uh, a lot of positives, uh, but like you said, uh, you know it's a, it's a tough opener, and we got our work cut out for us. Kyle Whittingham is joining us. So you return 17 starting players, and the list of returning starters includes quarterback Cam Rising, running back Tavion Thomas from an offense that was almost perfectly balanced. I mean, incredibly, 3,000 passing yards and 3,035 rushing yards. When you return that kind of talent, what does the next step in the offense look like this year? Well, I think for us to take the next step, we've got to have more explosive plays from the uh, from the outside, from the wide receiver position. We we're running the ball effectively. We've got uh, you know an outstanding set of tight ends. Uh, offensive line is solid. But if we're going to take the next step in our evolution, it's got to be big play. Uh, big plays coming from the wide receiver position, and that's what we're gearing things towards. We're talking to Cal Whittingham. Cal, you said something about Cam Rising that I thought was really pretty amazing. I want to read the quote. Quote, even when he wasn't the starter, he had the complete respect of the team, but then when he became the guy, it was almost an instant transformation where he was the leader of the leaders, the alpha leader, end of quote. I think that's incredible praise for him. How do you explain his personality? What makes him like that? Well, he's just got that it factor, and, and that's something you can't coach. I mean, it just comes, it comes naturally, and, and he's a guy that that uh, has complete command of, of the offense, complete uh, respect of his teammates, and uh, you know he, he leads by example. He's, he's a guy. There's nobody that outworks him. Uh, he's studying film constantly, and uh, he's a guy that uh, has that rare ability to make those around him better. And that that to me is what really truly separates the great players that they make the players around him perform better. You know that makes sense to me, but I wonder, how was he able to garner that much respect and really lead before he became that guy? Like, what can you do before you're in that role to garner that much respect? Well, first of all, he had been the guy the year before. You know, he had won the job uh, in the 2020 season. Uh, unfortunately, got hurt in the first quarter of the first ball game, so it knocked him out. Uh, had a, a significant shoulder injury. Had had surgery on that shoulder. Uh, we went out and got a transfer quarterback just to make sure that that uh, you know we had our bases covered in the event that uh, Cam wasn't able to come back from the shoulder surgery. Uh, he just barely lost out on the, uh, the quarterback competition that fall, the fall of. Uh, 21 and and uh, really you know was just like I said had a tremendous attitude never stopped uh, working never stopped preparing never 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 even uh, wavered in any way shape or form when his opportunity came and uh, at the end of game three he made the most of it and we never looked back it's such a great message great advice Kyle Whittingham joining us you know Kyle last season was unlike any other for you in the program two members of the team passed away within 10 months of each other the team got off to a slow start and then you go on to win the Pac-12 championship I understand you're focused on this season, but what did you and the team learn about each other and people, I mean, as people and character and grit over the past year? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, last season was the the best of times and the worst of times. I mean, as you mentioned, the the horrific, tragic uh, experience of losing our two teammates uh, was something that there is no blueprint or template for that. You you know, to try to navigate through that was very difficult. Uh, credit to our senior leadership. You know, our seniors did a great job of holding things together. And the, the really the catalyst for everything is uh, Aaron Lowe, the, the member, uh, second member that passed away during the season. His mom, uh, the two days after he passed, came and spoke to the team and and just said, "Hey, you know, me, Aaron, Ty Jordan, who had passed ten months earlier. He said, we, we all want you to continue and to compete." 
competing to, to uh, you know, finish this season the right way. And that really sparked a, a uh, you know, our team and, and struck a chord with our players. And and uh, they rallied and ended up winning, you know, nine of our last ten regular season games and making it to the Rose Bowl. You bet. Kyle Whittingham is joining us. I mean, you talk about the Rose Bowl. It's one thing when you're looking to get to your first Rose Bowl, but how different is the challenge when you're on top and you're looking to stay on top once you do get there? Well, that's very different. We've talked about that as a team constantly since January. That hey, we've got to be able to handle success, and and uh, you know it's harder to to stay on top than it is to get to the top. That's been the team message, and and uh, we've got that target on our chest. And you know our mo typically has been to be a little bit under the radar and and uh, play that under, underdog role, but uh, that's not going to be the case this year. And we've got to be able to manage that. Yeah, not anymore. Kyle Whittingham joining us. In fact, you and I have talked over the years about that move to the Pac-12 and what it's meant to the program, and very clear. Clearly, Kyle, you were not going to be happy just to show up in the conference and make some noise. How critical then was it to win that Pac-12 championship, and what does that represent to the program and the school overall? It was absolutely critical, and it was the next step in our evolution as a program was to was to win the Pac-12. We'd won the conference, uh, the South Division, I think four times prior. One one of those years we tied for the for the championship, so we didn't get to go to the championship game. But we'd been to the championship game two previous times, came up short, didn't get it done. So this third time around, our guys were were not going to be denied. They they were on a mission, they had a purpose, and uh, that, like I said, was the next step in our uh, in our program and, and getting to where we want to be. So what about that? I mean, evolution. Is- is the word right i mean there there are levels to this you get into the conference then you're competitive in the conference and then you talk about winning the conference then all of a sudden you're being talked about a national playoff contender what is your reaction when you hear that do you like being a part of that national conversation or does that feel like pressure and expectation that maybe you want to tamp down well, I think it shows respect for our program and our players, and, and uh, we're not hiding from that, or we don't, uh, you know, we don't, we don't uh, think that as a negative. As long as we don't get caught up in it and and uh, understand that, uh, you know, the only reason or, or way we're going to win games this year is through sheer hard work and and doing things the right way. And and uh, you know, our team was one game away from the playoffs in 2019. Had we won that Pac-12 championship game that year, we were in. And so we've been knocking at the door. And and uh, you know, if you talk about taking that next step for our program, it is trying to get into the CFP and and breaking down that barrier. And then, Kyle, so much of this is about how you adjust, how you react, what's going on around you. And, you know, there's certain things you certainly cannot control. But And I know you're focused on your job and what's in front of you, but what was your reaction to the news that USC and UCLA plan to leave the Big 12 or the Pac-12 for the Big 10? Yeah, very surprised, you know, in a way. But in another way, I mean, with the the landscape of college football and how much has changed and is going to continue to change, in my opinion, it wasn't uh, something that uh, was completely shocking. But the timing of it and, the, you know, those two teams that have been, uh, you know, just the, the, you know, a mainstay in the in the pack for years and years was was a little bit a little bit surprising. But we had a team meeting uh, the day after that and and spoke to the team and said, hey, you know, all we're focused on is our team and this season, this move here does nothing to affect that in fact the next two years there's no change and so just uh again ignore the noise block it out and let's take care of our business you know you never know right like i know you don't want to make it about you but the fact is you are now the second longest tenured head coach in fbs you said last year that when you first took over as head coach you figured you might be there for a few years before heading to the nfl what is it about you and college athletes that make it such a great fit and the fact that you're still doing what you're doing well, you know that's a good question. First of all, I love it here at the University of Utah. It's been a it's been a, a great uh, partnership, I guess you can say, with the university. Uh, working with college athletes is is very rewarding. Uh, seeing these guys come in here as 18 year old freshmen with maybe you know not a lot of direction at times, and to leave three or four years later with a degree in hand and a future, that's very rewarding. And and uh, you know as you mentioned, I, I had no idea that it was gonna, it was going to come to to an 18 year uh, career and. And uh, I'm grateful and feel blessed for it. And, uh, you know, it's just been a heck of a ride, one heck of a ride. I mean, an amazing ride. Kyle, is there anything about the NFL that still intrigues you? Is there any part of that that's still in the back of your mind? Uh, probably not. You know, I think that window is closed, and, and uh, that sh- you know, ship has sailed. Whatever cliches you want to say, but but uh, you know, I'm I'm very content here at Utah. Uh, just signed a, a contract. Uh, 
uh, extension this past year. And so um, I think, uh, you know, unless something bizarre happens, I think this is where I'm going to finish my career. So let me finally ask you this, and you and I have talked about it, but I'm always amazed by it. You hear people talk about burnout, and you just do not. Kyle, tell me I'm wrong, but you don't seem to have any hint of it whatsoever. Being an elite college football coach, especially in this changing landscape and in this era, is a meat grinder. How do you explain that freshness and that energy that you still have for it? Yeah, well, like I said, first of all, I love it. Love working with the athletes. Uh, second of all, when when we did make the move to the Pac-12, that in essence was like getting a new job. I mean, it was a whole different set of circumstances, whole new challenge, and so that was a re-energizer right there. And uh, you know, I've just. Uh, Got the passion for it, and as soon as that passion leaves, then it's time for me to hang it up. But right now, as you mentioned, I'm I'm as excited about this season as any season in the past, and, and really eager to uh, to get it started. I love it, Utah number seven in the preseason AP poll, and a major major challenge on September third. They open up at Florida. He is the head football coach of Utah. He is Kyle Whittingham. Kyle, I appreciate the conversation very very much. Great to have you back. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate you.